What is the antiderivative of a constant? Well, see if you can come up with the answer on your own. It's not too complicated. It's just the constant times x. And then, of course, we have to add this plus c here. So um, when we take the derivative of x times a constant, we just get that constant. And that's where this, this rule comes from. So let's just see an example of that. So what's the antiderivative of 3? Well, this is just equal to 3x plus c. And, and hopefully you're comfortable enough with derivatives to be able to take this derivative really quickly in your head and find out that, yeah, that's just 3. When we take that derivative, we just get 3. Okay, so what about, uh, so that's the derivative of a constant. What about if we take the derivative of a constant times x? Well, just like our limits and our sums and our derivatives, we're allowed to pull that constant outside if we want to. So k times the antiderivative of, of dx, uh, of x dx. And so this is going to be k times x squared over 2. So we're going to use the power rule to find that antiderivative, x squared over 2. Um, plus c. And we can multiply inside and we get kx squared over 2 uh, plus c. Now why didn't this c change? Why is it this? Why didn't I distribute the k to the c? Well this c is an arbitrary constant so the k did distribute to the c but uh, it didn't make any difference because c is arbitrary to begin with. It doesn't, you know, it's not going to change it. We don't know what c is. So we're just, the k gets absorbed in as a constant. Okay, so let's see some examples of this. Um, so how about the integral of 3 of, well, let's do a different number. Let's try 5x. 5x squared, how about? Well, this is the same thing as saying 5 times the integral of x squared dx. And now we can just use a simple power rule. And this is 5 times x cubed over 3 plus c, which is just 5x cubed over 3 plus c. And again, the 5 just gets absorbed into the constant c because we don't know what c is to begin with. Okay, so uh, those are some, some basic properties there. You might be asking, well, wait a minute. Why didn't we pull the k out of the integral here? Um, and we could have. So let me show you that. If we have a constant, if we have the integral of a constant, like let's say the integral of 5, or no, I just used 5. How about 7? or the antiderivative of 7. When I say integral and antiderivative, I basically mean the same thing. Well, this is equal to 7 times the antiderivative of just 1 dx. And now the antiderivative of 1 is just x. So this is 7 times x plus c. And again, this is just going to be 7x plus c. So we get the same answer either way. Um, in practice, we're probably not going to need to pull this k out very often, but there's some there's definitely some times where it's where it's useful. So a lot of times we'll just leave the k inside. So let me show you an example of that. So we might just want to write, let's say, the integral of uh, negative two x squared dx. Well, we can just leave that negative 2 inside because it's not too hard to compute the antiderivative with that inside. So we just have negative 2 times x cubed over 3 plus c. So I didn't take the negative 2 out, and it, it was saved us a few steps. Um, okay, so so those are that's how you take the derivative of a constant. And also, um, we learned that we can pull a scalar outside of an integral. Um, that's just like limits and derivatives and sums. 
Um, and then the final thing is just the sum of antiderivatives, or the, the antiderivative of a sum, I should say. So the antiderivative of f of x plus g of x is equal to the antiderivative of f of x plus the antiderivative of g of x. So the antiderivative of a sum is the sum of the antiderivatives. I forgot my dx's here. Um, that's, that's something that we saw with derivatives too and limits and so on. Um, so let's take a look at that. So the integral of let's say 3 plus uh, x well, now we can just take these separately. We know the integral of 3 plus the integral of x. We know both how to take both these integrals. This just becomes 3x plus c, let me call it c1, plus x squared over 2, that's the antiderivative of x, plus c, of course, we'll call it c2. So this just becomes 3x plus x squared over 2 plus, we'll just use one constant. If we add these two together, they become a new constant, and we're just going to call it c. Again, it doesn't matter because we don't know what it is. It's completely arbitrary. Um, so, again, uh, it's useful to know this. In practice, we probably don't want to we probably don't want to actually break this up because it creates more work for us. There's times where that will be very useful, but in this example it's not too hard just to do it all at once. So 3 plus x dx, um, and that's just going to be 3x plus x squared over 2 plus c. So we can just do them, we can just do the integral piece by piece. We don't need to actually write it broken up like this as long as we as long as we know that we can break it up so again uh, just to clarify this will actually be useful once in a while but more importantly it's just that we know that we can do it so we can get to this answer more quickly so we can just take the integral piece by piece okay uh, See you in the next video.